Hey gang, Mr. Spencer here. What I want to do in this video here is I want to introduce you to how to do some basic horizontal projectile calculations. Now there's a few tricks to this. So here's how I want to go about this. I want to review some stuff that we've already talked about, especially how in horizontal projectiles you have two components. You have the horizontal motion and the vertical motions. And there's some special things going on in each one of those. I also want to go over a few tricks that'll help you be able to, uh, to attack these and then do some example problems together. So how about this? Let's take a look at this video right here. And you've seen this. We've got these three different slow-mo videos of uh, different uh, balls that are rolling off the edge of a table and the ball goes down and hits a cup that's different distances away from from the edge now I want you to look at this and I want you to think about what's the same and what's different well if I'm thinking about what's different I'll notice that all three of these hit the ball or hit the hit the cup at different distances away from the from the edge now, what's the same about those? So even though all three of them hit at different distances away, you'll notice they all hit the ground at the same time. So they're all falling at the exact same rate, regardless of the speed that uh, the ball rolls off the edge of. Now, here's what's going on. If we were to take a look at, at this ball and make almost like a motion map, of, of what's going on, we would notice that the horizontal distance, so the side to side distance, each time is the exact same. So what we have here is our horizontal component of motion that is traveling at a constant velocity. So as it falls, it's going, in this case, to the right at the exact same rate the entire time. But if you look at what's happening as it moves down, each time it gets a little farther. Well, that means that it's accelerating. So what's happening there is our vertical component of the motion is in free fall. All right, the ob the only thing that's acting on that uh, that ball is is gr gravity. So it's accelerating due to gravity. So what we have to understand is that those two components of motion, the horizontal component and the vertical component, those all act independently of each other, and that's why we get that curved line. Now let's go over a little more in depth on what's happening here. So remember, that horizontal component, so the, the side to side component, that's constant velocity. All right, And we know that we can calculate velocity by taking distance divided by time. But it's important to remember that when we're talking about the distance, we're talking about the horizontal distance, the, the side to side distance, divided by the, the time it takes to fall. So that whole idea of velocity equaling distance divided by time, you should be able to use that to solve for any of those three variables. Now, when it comes to the vertical component, so the falling part, you know those, those big four kinematic equations. What we're gonna do in this case is we're going to use uh, baby G, okay? Or the acceleration due to gravity of negative 9.8 meters per second every second. And these are those big four kinematic equations. Like I said, remember those, uh, whenever we have an object that's in free fall, it's ex here on Earth, it's accelerating due to gravity, so we have that baby G value of negative 9.8 meters per second every second. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the symbols that you might see. So when we talk about the distance travel horizontally, you might see d of x or delta x of x. What that means is this is the distance traveled in the x direction or horizontally. Or this is the, the change in, uh, in position or displacement in the x. Similarly, our distance traveled vertically, that's d sub y or delta x of y. And you can see down here some examples of, of what those mean. But we have to be able to differentiate between what's happening horizontally and what's happening vertically. All right, so let's go and let's take a look at some of the, the little tricks. So the very first thing whenever you're trying to solve these problems is you have to find time first. 
all right? Once you've found time, then you find all the other stuff. And the reason why this is important is because the, the time that it takes to travel horizontally is the exact same amount of time to drop vertically. So here's some, some tips that I got from the website physicsclassroom.com. And really, these are just meant to give you some structure to how you are, are setting these up. Now, you know me, I, I'm not the best uh, artist in the world, but it really helps as I read the problem to go and, and draw a picture of, of what's going on. Once I've done that, I want to go and I want to split this paper into two halves. All right, uh, or at least where I'm, where I'm solving it. I, on one half, I have the horizontal information, and on the other half, I have the, the vertical information. And then I want to go through, and in each case, I want to list those variables, the things that the problem itself gives me, and also the things that I, it assumes that I, that I should know. And I want to do that for each. Once I've done that, I want to figure out what exactly it is I'm trying to figure out. What's the unknown there? And then I have to take a look at the information that I have in that horizontal or information and the vertical information, and I need to figure out which one of those allows me to solve the amount of time that the object or the, the projectile is in the air. Remember, the trick is find time first. Once I've figured out what the time is, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to use those other equations to solve for the unknown. So let's do this. Let's go through some examples together. Here's the first example. All right, so what we have here is we have our airplane. It is flying horizontally at a constant velocity. The pilot just happens to drop a bottle out of the window while flying at a height of 500 meters above the ground. The bottle lands 400 meters horizontally from that initial drop, uh, drop point. What we want to figure out is how fast is the plane flying when the bottle's released. So let's go through our little plan of attack. All right. Remember, we want to find time first. So the time that it takes for the bottle to fall vertically or to fall down is going to be the exact same amount of time that it takes to, to, to travel horizontally. So once we find the time, then we can use that to find the unknown, which in this case is how fast is that plane flying. So let's take a look at the information that we have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have over here on the left, I'm going to have the horizontal information. Over here on the right, I'm going to have the vertical information. And so let's, let's take a look at this. Horizontally, we know obviously the plane's flying horizontally. In this case, we're saying it's flying to the right. Okay. When that bottle is in the inside the plane, it's traveling the same speed as the plane. So once it's dropped, okay, it is it travels 400 meters horizontally, or in our case, to the right as it falls. What we need to do is is find the time here before we're going to be able to calculate the speed. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, take a look over at our, our vertical information. We know that as soon as the pilot drops the bottle, the only force that's acting on it is, is gravity. Okay, We're pretending that there's no um, air resistance or anything else like that. And because gravity is the only force that's acting on it, here on Earth, it's going to accelerate due to gravity. So it's going to accelerate at negative 9.8 meters per second every second. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the plane our origin. So we're going to say anything that is below this is going to be negative. All right. So in this case, because it drops 500 feet, we're going to say that it has a, a displacement, a vertical displacement of negative 500 meters. Now we're also going to say if I'm holding that, that bottle and then I drop it, well, it's traveling horizontally, but also, it's not dropping yet. So that initial velocity is, is zero meters per second. So this is where we're going to use, this is how we're going to find time. So taking a look at our, our vertical information, we know that acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. 
We know that the distance traveled in the y direction is negative 500 meters because it's 500 meters below the, where it started. And we know that the initial velocity is zero meters per second. All right. We also know that horizontally, the distance traveled in the, in the horizontal direction is, is 400 meters. And we know that velocity can be calculated by distance divided by time. Well, we're trying to find a velocity. We, we know the distance, we just don't know the time, which is why we're gonna use the vertical information to find that. So let's do this. So we take a look at all the information that we have, and now we need to figure out which equation will help us best to do this. Well, if I've got all my information right here and we're trying to find time, well, I'm gonna use this idea right here that the, the displacement in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration due to gravity times time squared. So I'm gonna plug things in here. And when I do that, when I solve for time, I end up getting a time of about 10.1 seconds. Now remember, this is the, the time it takes to fall, that 10.1 seconds that it takes to fall down to the ground is also the same amount of time that it takes to move to the, to the right. So we're gonna take that time and we're gonna put that into the horizontal information and calculate the velocity, which is what we're looking for. So we know that the distance horizontally is 400 meters and the time that it takes to travel that far is 10.1 seconds, which gives us a velocity of 39.6 meters per second. All right, let's do example number two. Example number two is, is pretty similar to the one that we, that we just did, but we have some different information now. So in this case, once again, we have an airplane. It's flying along at 60 meters per second. It's, a, it's 300 meters above the ground. And this time, instead of dropping a pop, we're dropping a, a sack of flour. What we want to know is how far from the point of the release would the sack have traveled horizontally when it hits the ground. So once again, we're gonna break this up into our horizontal information and our vertical information. We know that horizontally it's traveling at 60 meters per second. We're trying to figure out that delta x or the displacement in the x direction. We know that our velocity in the x direction is gonna be displacement divided by time. So I can do a little bit of algebra and I can use that to solve for the displacement. Well. In order to do that, I need to have the velocity in the x, and I need to have the time. We've got the velocity, that's 60 meters per second. We don't have the time, so we're gonna to need to use the vertical information in order to find that. So let's take a look at that, that vertical information that we have. Well, we know that that sack of flour drops 300 meters, so it's going to be negative 300. We know that acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that the, or the, the, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, and we're gonna use this to, to find the time so that we can then go back here and calculate that displacement. So when I set this up, I know that, once again, my displacement's negative 300 meters. We know the acceleration due to gravity. We know the initial velocity. So I'm gonna figure out which equation has all of those things that I need. And it's the same equation that we used before. And once again, I'm gonna solve for time. So when I do this, I end up getting a time of 7.8 seconds. And like we mentioned before, the time, the 7.8 seconds that it takes to drop from the plane is also the exact same amount of time that it takes to move forward. So let's go and use that in our, in our solution. So like we mentioned before, this is the information that we have. And then in order to find the displacement, we're gonna to need to take the velocity multiplied by the time. So when I take the 60 meters per second that is traveling horizontally and multiply that by the time, that it takes to travel, 
I get a total distance of 468 meters. Let's do this final example, example number three. You, you're, hopefully you're starting to get the feel for this. So let's uh, let's take a look. Maybe you've seen, hopefully you've seen Stranger Things. It's a great show. Um, back in season number one, the the quarry was played a pretty important role in in some of the things that were going on. So let's say that Mike throws a rock horizontally from the top of the of the quarry and it's only traveling at three meters per second not very fast at all and it hits it falls and it eventually hits the water that's below at the bottom 47 meters away from the wall we want to know how far below is the water from the top of the quarry so let's take a look at the information that we have okay we know that he throws that ball horizontally with an initial velocity of three meters per second. All right, so that's in our horizontal info. We also know that the, it strikes 47.5 meters away. So our, our displacement in the X is that 47.5 meters. Vertically, we know that even though he throws it in the horizontal direction, it's not moving down at first okay so our initial velocity in the y is zero meters per second well it's in free fall so we know what the acceleration is that's the negative 9.8 meters per second squared and we need to figure out that displacement that's in order to figure out how far below is the water from the top of the quarry so just like we've done before we need to figure out time so I'm going to go and I'm going to take my horizontal information. I know that because it's traveling at a constant velocity horizontally, all right, my velocity is three meters per second. I know the displacement is 47.5 meters. I know that velocity, whenever something's in constant velocity, it's going to be traveling, or I can calculate that by taking the displacement divided by the time. And if I just solve for the time, I get displacement in the x divided by the velocity, or 47.5 meters divided by 3 seconds, which gives us 15.8 seconds, which is a, quite a long time. But like we've been talking about in all these other examples, that time right there, that 15.8 seconds, is the exact same amount of time that it takes to fall that distance. So we are going to to go and use that to solve for that displacement in the y all right so we are trying to find the displacement in the y we know that the initial velocity is zero we know that acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared and our time is 15.8 and if we do that we get a we get a, a distance below of negative 1,223 meters. That's pretty dang tall. Yeah, I don't know how realistic that is, but at least that's what the answer is. So anyways, huh, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna give you a few of these to try on your own, but the idea is to, to work through these and talk to me if you need any help. All right, talk to you soon.